When episode seven was first pitched to me that we're gonna do a crossover with Lower Decks, I thought, is it gonna be like Roger Rabbit? Are they gonna be animated characters following us around the ship? And he said, no, no, no. When they beam in, it's Jack and Todd live action version. I thought, oh, okay, that's brilliant. You guys look very realistic. It's so cool that they did this. Mariner is like one of my favorite roles to play ever. To get to actually embody her, I think that's so cool and it's so cool to get to be part of it. I can't be the only one that actually thought the whole episode was gonna be animated. I might have been the only one. It sort of came about organically. Everybody at Strange New Worlds is a huge fan of Lower Decks. They came to me and they said, would this be something you're into? And I was like, of course, because everybody that we cast on Lower Decks happens to kind of look like their characters. I mean, it's something that the internet is constantly telling us and we're like, yeah, we noticed that too. We might have a problem. We took some real big swings this season. We've done comedy on this show, but to have cartoon characters come to life, it just added this energy that was so fun. Uh... Hi. I love Lower Decks. I think that that is probably one of my favorite iterations of Trek. Whatever, nerd. Just because it's so silly and fun. Hi, huh. I'm Captain. Captain Christopher Pike. That's me. To go into a show and know that my character is a fan of all the other cast members was such a fun thing to play. I'm seriously freaking out right now. I mean, I can't believe that I'm here. I wanted to be really respectful of the fact that we were guests invited into a, other people's space. I'm gonna keep this like 100% profesh, but I was thoroughly unprepared for how hot young Spock was going to be. Yeah. Working with Jack and Tawny was incredible. They were so prepared and so ready to play. They're both so funny. It brought that out in us. It brought more of that out. They're so much fun, those two. It was literally like a free stand-up show every day. <laughs> Fans are going to be floored at how seamlessly all of the writers and all of the showrunners blended these two worlds together. We sure this is wise? Oh, but I'm going with it. There were so many conversations leading to the details of this episode. What shade could Jack's purple hair be for Boimler? We really wanted them to feel like they're animated characters. When you look at Mariner, to me, the volume of her hair always said curls. But I was like, let's text Mike, and this is his baby. And Mike instantly was like, gotta be curls. And I was like, that's what I said too. I went back and looked at a lot of Lower Decks episodes to, to get the kind of Boimlerisms down. I snuck a few things in there. He does a lot of this in the show, and I tried to get some of that in there. I did the Section 31 power walk. I got the Boimler scream in there. What you got there? Ah! Huh, um. It was cool to see how he moved, and then to try to bring that into my own body was, it was such a weird, trippy experience, but so rewarding and so cool. Don't ruin this for me, I will end your life. When you have both of them on screen at the same time, it just makes you smile. I was like, never let this end. I love how funny they are, but how Starfleet they are at the same time. How do you know that? Well, because we are time travelers, yeah. as we've been telling you. I feel like he doesn't listen. When they hire a director at Strange New Worlds, you're told that you're going to do your episode as a movie, and your movie will be a horror movie, an action movie, or a period movie, or in this case, it's a full-on comedy, which was a thrill for me. I quickly realized that with Jonathan Frakes at the helm, stepping lightly was not what was invited. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan was like, we want you to come in guns blazing. Yes, like that. Jonathan Frakes, God bless him, amazing sense of humor, really all about the fun. That whole cast already plays funny and they're not afraid of funny. Hopefully, the audience will find it as funny as we did. And we all had a real good time. Great. Okay, so is Ahura here? You guys are great, but is she here? I really had a great time with Celia Rose Gooding. What an instant friend for life. I probably shouldn't mention this, but I have always admired you. Really? I felt so honored to get to be a part of this important character moment of being the kind of catalyst that tells Ahura, hey, you really need to lighten up. I think it's time we took a break. I really don't do breaks. Yeah, I'm starting to catch that. Just to be part of uh, such a nice moment for her character was really cool. Oh, easy. That's a lot of... What's the statute of limitations on um, admitting to stealing props from an active duty Star Trek show? I did take a souvenir, yes. I, I took my, my comm badge. Well, they, they, they let me have it, it's okay. I took my comm badge. They made us Lower deck style comm badge because they wanted it to look like our show. Very happy to have it. It's just such a little cool trinket. I can take that, right? 
meeting all of you has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. Thank you. To have an opportunity to cross over with such a beloved faction of this franchise and really work with two incredible, incredible actors, it was such a joy. I love Jack and I love Tawny. I think they pull an energy out of the cast that we really haven't had an opportunity to relish in yet. And so working with them was a dream. I, I hope we get to do it again and again and again. It really was such a testament to the kind of sturdiness of Strange New Worlds to be able to take. Our show came in and kind of went, ah, and like shook everything. And their show just kind of went, okay. And I was like, wow, this is beautiful. We didn't break it. We didn't break it. Please let us come back.